Hello viewers, I am Dr. Rovil. I work as a lecturer in pathology in a medical college hospital and I am making this video for my students and also for you. Hope someone finds this helpful. Today's topic is Turner Syndrome Part 1. This video will contain introduction to Turner Syndrome followed by brief discussion about its definition, incidence, karyotypes, and pathogenesis. Then in the second part of this series we will finish our discussion by talking about the clinical features, diagnosis, and management of Turner syndrome. Okay, a lot of topics, so let's begin. First question, what do we mean by Turner syndrome? Turner syndrome is a genetic disorder and as a matter of fact it is the most common sex chromosome abnormality in females. A female with Turner syndrome has only one normal X chromosome instead of the usual two. The disease was discovered in 1938 by Henry Turner. So now that we have talked about some introductory points regarding Turner syndrome, now we will move on and talk about the definition of Turner syndrome. So how can we define Turner syndrome? As written in your textbook, Turner syndrome can be defined as a genetic disorder resulting from complete or partial monosomy of X chromosome characterized primarily by hypogonadism in females. Okay, I hope you're still with me. You didn't run away just like my students do when I try to teach them definitions of medical science. I even have to show them teddy bears to keep them calm. So look, I am also showing you teddy bear. So look at the teddy. Don't run away because I will explain this definition line by line now. Okay. So let's go through this definition one more time. Turner syndrome is a genetic disorder resulting from complete or partial monosomy of X chromosome characterized primarily by hypogonadism in females. Now in order to understand this definition first we must know what do we mean by monosomy. Now always remember monosomy is an abnormality in the number of chromosomes in our cells where there is presence of one chromosome from a pair. For example, recall that a normal female individual has 23 pairs of chromosomes and among them one pair is made up of X chromosomes. So a normal female has two X chromosomes, right? Okay, now her phenotype, her karyotype will be written as 46XX. Now if a female individual has only one X chromosome instead of the usual two, her karyotype will be written as 45X and that is complete monosomy of X chromosome. Okay, so this is the karyotype of complete monosomy for X chromosome. We can see that there is presence of only one X chromosome instead of the usual two X chromosome. So that was in short about complete monosomy. Now what do we mean by partial monosomy? In partial monosomy, portion of a chromosome has only one copy whereas rest of the chromosome has two copies. So now that we have defined Turner syndrome and also explained the definition, now we will move on and talk about the incidence of Turner syndrome. And always remember this is very important for your multiple choice examinations. So the incidence of Turner syndrome is 1 in 2500 live-born females. Okay, so that is 1 in 2500 live-born females. 
So now that we have talked about the incidence of Turner syndrome, now we will move on and talk about the various carrier types of Turner syndrome. So as you can see in the whiteboard, I have already written a lot of carrier types. And as a matter of fact, in Turner syndrome, we will see three types of karyotypic abnormalities. In 57% of the cases, the individual with Turner syndrome will have complete monosomy of X chromosome. Okay? So the total number of chromosomes will be 45 and there will be only one X chromosome instead of the usual two. Now in Another 14% of the cases, Turner syndrome may result due to structural abnormalities in one of the X chromosome. So you can see that I have written a lot of karyotypes that are denoting such structural abnormalities. For example, in this karyotype we can see that the total number of chromosomes is 46. One of the X chromosome is normal, but look what has happened here. The other X chromosome is not normal. It is in fact an isochromosome, and here portion of the long arm of this chromosome, this X chromosome has duplicated. So this is an isochromosome, and this karyotype will also result in Turner syndrome. Moving on to the next example, we can see that in the next example, the total number of chromosomes is also 46. One of the X chromosome is normal, but look what has happened in the other X chromosome. The other X chromosome became a ring chromosome. The thing is, the other X chromosome became ring chromosome due to deletion of portions of long arm and portion of short arm and then fusion of the terminal ends okay so this will result in formation of a ring chromosome moving on to the next example we can see here the number of chromosome the total number of chromosome is also normal one x chromosome is normal but in the other x chromosome there is deletion of long arm recall that Q stands for the long arm of a chromosome and P stands for the short arm of a chromosome. So in the next example we can see that here the number of chromosome is also normal, 46, but one of the X chromosome is missing short arm. Okay, so all these karyotypes will also result in partial monosomy of X chromosome and that will ultimately result in development of Turner syndrome. Now in another 29% of the cases, individuals with Turner syndrome will have a mosaic pattern of karyotype. Now what do you mean by this pattern? Here there will be mixture of cell population. In one population there will be complete monosomy of X chromosome and there will be also presence of other cell populations with normal or abnormal karyotypes. So here we can see a variety of mixtures one cell population has 45X and the other cell populations may have normal or abnormal karyotypes. And particularly important is the second example in this group. So in the second example we can see that in one cell population the karyotype is 45X. So in that cell population there is complete monosomy of X chromosome but in another cell population in the same individual there is 46 chromosome but more interestingly there is also Y chromosome okay and this type of individual will have high risk of development of gonadoblastoma besides development of Turner syndrome 
So now that we have talked about the various karyotypes of Turner syndrome, now we will move on and talk about the pathogenesis of Turner syndrome. Now, the molecular pathogenesis of Turner syndrome is not completely understood. What we do know is that in individuals with Turner syndrome, during the early stages of embryogenesis, fetal ovaries develop normally. However, due to the absence of a second X chromosome, there is accelerated loss of oocytes that is completed by two years of age. As a result, ovaries of individuals with Turner syndrome are reduced into atrophic fibrous strands that are also known as streak ovaries and they will contain no ova nor any follicles. So there will be amenorrhea in individuals with Turner syndrome. Now, besides problem with ovary, individuals with Turner syndrome will also have some other non-gonadal problems. Among them, one important problem is that they are of short stature. Now, why is that? The thing is, in X chromosome, some genes responsible for normal growth and development are also present. Particularly important for Turner syndrome is the short stature homeobox gene that is located in the short arm of X chromosome. Now, this is a very interesting gene because this gene can remain active even after X chromosome inactivation and this gene also has homologue in short arm of Y chromosome. So, the thing I'm trying to say is that this short stature homeobox gene is present both in males and females in two copies. Okay. But in Turner syndrome, one X chromosome is missing and that will lead to short stature. Short stature homeobox gene is expressed in the growth plates of certain long bones, for example, in radius, ulna, tibia, fibula, etc. And they are also expressed in first and second pharyngeal arch. So in Turner syndrome, since there is loss of one X chromosome, so that will result in short stature. Amenorrhea and short stature, these are very common findings in Turner syndrome and now we know their mechanism. In the second part of this series, we will continue this discussion and talk about the clinical features, diagnosis and management of Turner syndrome. So this concludes part one of this series. I hope this video was helpful. If you like my videos, do comment, share, subscribe and let me know. And for my students, I will also recommend you to go through your textbooks to know more information. I will upload the second part of this series hopefully within a week. Until then, take care and stay blessed. Thank you.